So let me do a drawing. The difference between human beings and rats. <laughs> okay, let's say there are three tubes. And in one of the tubes, there is cheese. Okay. The rat presents itself in a tube. He goes in, no cheese. He's com he comes back, no cheese. What does the rat do? The rat do, the rat goes in another tube. <coughs> He goes in, no cheese, he comes back, no cheese, what does he do? He tries the third up and he finds the cheese. What human beings are doing? <laughs> they go in the tube, they don't find cheese. As they are smart, they say, <laughs> maybe I missed it. So they come back. <laughs> and now they start knowing the tube so it is a safe place I know the tube I miss it I, I need to try harder so I, I come back <laughs> ah I, did, I didn't find the cheese <sighs> what's the meaning of not finding the cheese <laughs> uh, I have to go back <laughs> So I go back, I paint the tube, I change the color of the tube, but I stay in the tube. Okay? So if, I don't know how old you are, maybe 20, 30, or whatever, for 20 years you have had a tube that does not work, I, su I suggest... Let's do the rat philosophy. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. And, and as it is a tube we know, it, we have a hard time letting go of it. It's like we, it like, it's like if we, are, we have been an idiot all our life. Is that what it means? So I'd rather stay in the tube than try another one. This is a problem with human beings because we are smart. We invest. Okay? The rat is pragmatic. It's not smart. The, the first point is where is our brain? It's in a box. It has no access to reality, right? It's in a black box, in a black cave, and the access to reality is through our senses, okay? And it is filtered by what? And this is what we are going to, to look. So, Usually scientists uh, say that the brain has three parts. What they call the stem or the uh, old, uh, old brain that we share with all animals, even snakes. No, the, the limbic uh -huh. is mainly with the amygdala, limbic. Bic. So, the, the stem is uh, regulating all our uh, breathing, uh, temperature, uh, all our functions. Okay. So, we share it with Oh, yeah, most of the animals living. Okay. Then, the limbic system is shared with 
uh, higher uh, animals and it's the cause of uh, emotions. If you see cats and dogs, they have a limbic system. So what is it doing? It's uh, it decides if what is perceived is a danger or not. So it's like a memory stack of experiments and each perception goes through the computer to see if it can be a danger or not. Okay, so uh, I'll come back to, to this. And the neocortex is the big part of the brain that we have more than other animals that is able to analyze, think, evaluate. Okay? So, Uh, of course, it's more complex. For instance, when we see, it's some part in the back of the brain that converts the signal in an image. We don't see an image. Okay? The image goes in the re retina. The retina is sending signals. It's not sending an image. It is sending signals and the signals are translated into an image. Okay? This is why babies learn to see. It's not that they see when they, were, they are born. When they, they are born, it, their vision is blurry. So they s slowly learn to see. Okay? But uh, maybe it's too much detail. The, point, the main point I want to make today is what happens if the limbic system decides that this is a danger. Let's say your eyes see a car coming towards you at a high speed. Fear. Exactly. So if this happens, the limbic system blocks the neocortex. And what does it do? It gives the order to the brain stem to send all the blood possible where? In, in the muscles. Because either you have to run fast and you need your muscles. You don't need your brain to think. Or you, the danger is you, you want to fight. Well, fighting with a car is not a good idea. But if it is with a smaller danger, you may want to fight. You need your muscles. <coughs> so the brain stem gives the order uh, the limbic system gives the order to the brain stem to send the blood in the muscles. So the brain is using 25% of the blood we have in our body. 20, it's a big amount. Okay. So it sends as much as possible in the muscles. So it puts the neocortex in uh, lower uh, mode, mode. Uh, in, in a standby mode. Stand yes. So you're going to say, that's great. Why it's fantastic? It's fantastic because it's not the time to think is the car beautiful. It's the time to run and save your life. Okay. 
So this is great. The problem is that today we don't have so many life dangers. Most of the dangers are psychological dangers. What, what is he or she going to think of me? Am I making a mistake? Am I good enough? And these dangers are uh, managed by the same system. It's a danger. Okay? So let's say you have an exam that is important to you. So the level of fear is high, which means the level of danger is high. Where is your blood? Not in your brain. Yeah. So you become idiot. And most of the things you know, you cannot access. You go out from the examination room, the danger is finished, everything comes back. Okay. You go in an interview, you want the job, it's important to you. So the level of danger is high. Where is the blood? In muscles. You go out from the interview, you think, oh, I should have said this, I should have said that. Okay. So when the level of danger is high, we lose part of our brain. We can say we become lobotomized. We lose our mind. Which is when we have seen our fixed ideas, when we think our fixed idea is going to happen, what happens? The level of danger rises. Okay? The blood goes where? In the muscles. And the automatic pilot puts all the, all the juice we have on the unconscious goal. And then we regret. We, we regret what we say, we regret what we decide, we regret what we do. Okay. <coughs> so this is the, the most important part I wanted to use about neuroscience. It's when we are in danger, we prepare to fight or flight and the consequence is we are l partially lobotomized. Or freeze. Yeah, or freeze. That it it's happens also. Easy to remember. Free yeah, F. you don't know what to do. Some kind of panic. Yeah, yeah. When the panic is high, and you don't know what to do, you freeze. It's a third possibility. It's called pat hormonal. Okay. So this is. What I would like to do now is to see with you how I built this stack of memories. Yes? So when I go to the exam or a very important interview or something, I don't panic. I'm very concentrated. I do the best. Yeah. How? Oh, if you're, if you're not afraid. It's okay. I am very afraid. Because so the exam is very important. My muscles are, my legs are shaking, but I still do yeah. it. Yeah. But when you go out, do you, ha no? no? You don't think I should have said this or I should have done Sometimes, that? Sometimes, but for the really important things for which my legs are shaking, I do the best at the exam. So you succeed to keep your... Uh, yeah. So that's how you just... So basically, you can concentrate when you have the emotions, right? Yeah. There is a yeah. way to gather things Absolutely. up. Okay. Absolutely. Absolutely. 
like yes. uh, like yogis in uh, coal they can succeed to yeah. keep their uh, metabolism uh, not uh, getting cold or uh, of course it's possible but i won't say for me it has always been the same with examination but now i understand that it is because that for me was not a danger it may be important but not a danger so maybe you have to see what is your main <coughs> fixed idea and probably uh, it doesn't fit with that situation so you just <coughs> you, your system of uh, danger doesn't start so you have your capacities, mind capacities, probably. I just want to comment, I also have similar situation with the exams. So same exam I did twice. I first time I <laughs> was really in danger. I did very well. But after that I needed like whole day, two days, two months just to recover because still I, my energy levels was so low, I put everything there, but then I damaged part of my physical body, the cortisol was there. And the second time, I did the exam without panicking, I did much, much better, better, and I came out, I finished early, it took me less time, and I came out full of energy, fun, joy. So. I mean, it is possible to do it, but it is possible to do for me, it was possible to do better and without wasting energy, because it doesn't really waste that much energy to do an exam which you know. But if it's stress, mm -hmm. I can do it, a little worse, but then afterwards yeah. I have to recover. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So, w what is important is Knowing that, you will see yourself uh, losing some capacity, not losing some capacity. Uh, what I would like to, to, <coughs> to tell you now is how does the limbic system decide if it is a danger or not? Exactly, experience. I am uh, two years old, the stove is hot, I put my hand on the stove, it burns. Okay, so when it burns, for a child, it can be a very traumatic experience. And the amygdala, the amygdala stores stove, metal. If it was in, uh, at night, uh, no light. If there was a specific music, this music. If there was a specific smell, this smell, it shows all the elements that was at that moment. Okay? So when I meet again the same smell, even if there is no stove, the danger rings. If I meet the same music, even if there is no stove, the danger rings. So you have to know that this saved our species. They, they were, uh, scientists say they were different type of human beings, five, six types. One type survived. So which one survived and which one did not? So let's say you, you walk in the forest 
and there is a lion hidden in a bush. And the bush starts moving and the lion jumps and eats your friend. Okay? So, the, the elements are forest, bush, lion. Okay? So, and sound, and... Uh, okay, so... The species who, uh, who cannot uh, feel a danger with one of the elements, you will need to have all the elements to be in danger. So if instead of a lion it is a tiger, you will get eaten. Because there was no lion. Okay? And the species disappears. Our species, you go in the forest, the bush starts moving. Uh, even if there is no lion, <laughs> just the wind. Okay? Your limbic system says danger, and you run. And you survive. So our species is like this. We survived. But just one a small part of what we consider being a danger, one small part appears and all the systems start ringing. Beep, 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 beep. Uh, sounds like that 5% we did yesterday. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, that's it. Exactly, exactly, exactly. This is a 5%. We start feeling not well, we don't know why. Yeah. But the reason is that this 5% is connected to an experience I had, which was a danger form. Okay? Let's say uh, your father was angry and he was yelling at you and he started beating you. Okay? <coughs> So, father yelling, beating. Beating for a child, it's like getting killed. It's not very far. Okay? So, anyone just raising his voice will make you uncomfortable. Okay? Because it is the first step it says danger. It's one of the elements. Okay? Man. Okay? Man. Just man can be danger. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, and for the child, father is authority. So, authority is danger. So, my boss or... Uh, or a, a policeman, or authority. Before authority does anything, I <laughs> danger. Okay? This is what we call the 5%. It's just a very small part of an experience that I labeled danger for my life. So if you fall doing bicycle or uh, a fight with a friend or whatever as a child was a danger has been stored with all the elements that was in that event. You fall and it was because of rain. You fall in bicycle and you hurt yourself because of rain. When it rains, you will not like the rain. You, your mother kisses you under the rain. When it rains, you will like the rain. Okay? Thank you. Okay. I had an experience, and it's like, it's about per perception. Because once, once you get, you, you you connect fear to something, 
you label a lot of things with that meanings. But they have different meanings. But mm -hmm. in the end, you end up to, to do the same things yeah. and you misunderstand yeah. things. And one day I, I read a quote and it was like, once you burn your, your tongue with the soup, you are gonna be afraid even with salad. Mm -hmm. And it was so clarifying <laughs> for me because I, I understood that it was meaningless to be, to be afraid, but yeah. it's very tricky. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. There is an element of truth to that uh, leaves thing. So um, I used to cross fields which had lots of snakes. So I was very sensitive to the small changes in the grasses. The grass is moving somewhere. Some grass is changing. I can. Uh, get highlighted then. So it took me a while to go through another field and enjoy the field that, okay, there is no snake there. Mm. So just because there's a leaf doing that, there's no lion there. Um, so uh, what what do you I mean? I, I think I did something to understand the difference between this shaking is lion, this shaking is snake, absolutely. this is no lion, no st Absolutely, absolutely. We, we, we learn and we adjust. W what, I am s what I am saying is uh, it's a mechanism that helps help us survive. But sometimes the same mechanism makes us consider a danger, something that is not dangerous. Mm. But for the survival of the species, hmm. the survival say, I better make you afraid of something not dangerous <laughs> <laughs> than, <laughs> not, than take the risk ah. of you not being afraid of something dangerous. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. So, yeah, okay. I, it's a question? Sure. So, thank you. Thank you. But this works in the other way too, right? For example, when I have a nice experience, everything around. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay, Absolutely. so that's Absolutely. good. Uh, I, I will tell you about one of my experiences just after. Okay, thank you. But this of logical. course, this is moving. It's not something fixed, okay? And the uh, scientists say that we store this in our DNA. Ah. So we pass it to our children. So even if the child did not experience that smell, if he encounters that smell, he will know it is dangerous. <coughs> it's for survival. It's, it helped us the species survive. Okay. So now I would like to, to give a name of what happens when there is a trigger like this. Okay, there is a small trigger. We call this a pinch. Pinch. Pinch in English means to pinch. It is an emotional pinch. when there is something perceived uh, pinch means pi okay so if there is a danger if our perception makes us think there is a danger we have a physical reaction physical and emotional, our heartbeat change, our breathing change, there is a physical and emotional <coughs> reaction that you call a pinch. Okay, so in, in your booklet, at the end of the booklet, you have a page called pinch list. Last page. So if during the 
workshop, you have pinches that come. You just, okay, it's, it's to take note of your pinches from now on. Now you know what a pinch is. You know where it comes from. It's a danger that makes you react. from that those five percent that we wrote so no, they no. are not on ten or they same, are the same. same ah the same same okay so same. the the five percent is the the element that triggers the pinch it's just before okay it's it what makes you react okay so so it's quite, instance, quite the same okay. let's say your fixed idea is being humiliated they will humiliate me okay if I smile, you may feel a danger. Okay, yeah, like uh, with the example you made yesterday. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So, the if I smile is a 5%, it creates in you a pinch. Okay, it triggers the Okay. Pinch. What you feel, you s the smile, okay. 5%. Huh? What happens to you okay. physically, emotionally, that is the pinch. So like if I, uh, I'm afraid not to be understood and uh, not to be, uh, not to have the image of a clever girl, yeah? Uh, when I'm explain explaining something and someone makes like, like, exactly. what are you saying about what are you speaking that about? <laughs> so that when he makes like this, it's yeah. a 5%. Okay. It triggers in you a reaction. Okay. Uh, and it is the, p the pinch. pinch. Okay. We call it the pinch. Thank you. It's like a pinch. It's like when do doing this, he was pinching you. So the pinch is something that puts you in alarm, okay, uh, as far as I understand. But it's also something that gives you, like, uh, it's annoying you, something that it's annoying you. Also irritating. Also irritating. irritating you, yeah? So that is also a pinch. The, the, the pinch is a physical, emotional reaction. reaction. Okay, okay, two different... The cause of the pinch is usually a 5%. Okay, okay. It can be bigger, it can be a 20%. But okay, we call it 5 5% is enough. Okay, the origin is there. Yeah. This is what it is. Okay, yeah. thank you. Can I? Sure. Yes? Thank you. Um, so, um, uh, pinch is my reaction or something uh, annoying or like or a small spots. signal, what I catch, what makes me uh, feel bad. Exactly. Wh which one? Yeah. Both. It's the trigger, trigger and pinch. Yes. So my reaction is a pinch. The pinch. So you um, feel usually I you freeze. I just yeah. don't do anything. Don't say anything. Yeah. Is okay. that my my pinch? I g I give you one I had many times yesterday with the noises, mm. a phone ringing. Yeah the door banging, the man <laughs> with that thing. And that there, those were 5% different, all noises. And I was disturbed and annoyed. Mm. The pinch was this, <gasps> you, mu you must have seen my face. I, I mean, you see it. Because it, uh, sometimes it's dangerous, sometimes it's annoying, sometimes it's uh, irritating. Mm -hmm. The physical, uh, the emotion you have is different. Mm -hmm. And that is what we call pinch. Mm -hmm. yeah. But then you have many things triggering it, and that is the 5%. Yeah. It's like if the noise was physically pinching you. Mm -hmm. Can I? 
but how you would write it as a pinch list? What will would you? I, I was would annoyed. I would I would write uh, phone. Uh, so we're ringing. writing actually our triggers, not the pictures. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Ah. Yes. yes. So it's triggers. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Phone ringing. Okay. Uh, you can write, can be interesting in your list to write phone ringing and what it provokes. Irritation, um, I don't know, distraction. That could be interesting to understand what is your kind of reaction to that thing. Mm -hmm. But uh, to keep track of all the things that uh, activate your system. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, in summary. Oh. Okay. Okay. But when I know the pinch, can I, I don't know, go back to what it, uh, what it provoked it? Yeah. When I was, because sure. it must be linked to something in the past. Sure. So, for example, uh, my pinch is when I'm in the dark <coughs> and someone lights on a, a strong light, I hate it. For example, at the beach, when someone has a telephone, I hate it so much. Mm. Can I go back to the... Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, w now we are just defining the pinch. Yeah. But there are many things we can do. With it. Yeah, you said not be at the mercy of the pinch. Yeah. So in uh, very often, I don't know if it's here, but in the Indian culture, if you're uh, traveling in a public transport, people will listen to their mobile phone on loud. Mm. And they'll be sitting right next to you, and, uh, and sometimes it can be an extremely annoying thing. They don't even realize. Yeah. Not even care. They don't. E now, and I'm, <laughs> I'm getting stabbed, not pinched. I want to. You know, <laughs> so <laughs> that's it. That's a pinch. So not be at the mercy of the pinch. We'll see. Ah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, the whole seminar is <laughs> So so we start by seeing what puts us at the mercy yes. and then we shall see what, what to, to do, do with, with it. it. But uh, uh, the example I wanted to give was uh, in two, three years ago, I went to Le Lake Titicaca, Titi, 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 Titi 4,000 meter high, and uh, the first night went well, the second night I could not breathe. <gasps> I thought I was going to die. Really, I literally thought I was going to die. There is no oxygen. There is little, no little oxygen. Little yes. oxygen. So my first reaction was to get up from bed, and I, I wanted some light, but I was in a, on an island, no electricity. So in the hotel, there was no electricity. So I thought to open the curtain. Okay, have some. Uh, so I opened the curtain, and black, black. I could not see anything, uh, uh, and I was still not breathing. Uh, and, and on that island, no doctor, no phone, nothing. Two hours from the first transportation. I really thought I was going to die. Peru is a very poor country. So then I, I went at the sea level, and a few days later it went well, and, and I forgot. One month later, I am in Pondicherry, India. And one night, it starts again. <gasps> I'm going to die. <gasps> OK, I am at sea level. <laughs> OK, but it is a poor country. And the night was dark, 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 dark. And it was enough to reactivate the, the yeah. So I decided to fight, to, to confirm that we can do, I decided to fight my fear and I went to dive in, 
in apnea in the Red Sea. Of course I was afraid, but I wanted to face my fear. And as it was not a childhood trauma, I was, it was easier to get rid of. But when it is a childhood decision, it's like we, we know about life. It's like this. It's much more difficult. But of course we can do something about it. Yeah. Thank you. What I experienced is a pinch. So I went with a very good friend of mine who's also a client, uh, a woman. And uh, for the first time, I went with her to a bookstore. And I think I have an image of myself as a curator of books. I know what books are uh, good to read and so on. I know what's in the bookstore. I know what's latest and so on. So when I went into the store, I chose seven or eight books, which I thought might be good for her to have a look at. And I went and gave, offered it to her. It's the first time we ever went to a bookstore. So I said, uh, you might like to take a look at these. And she said, just leave it here. I know what books I want. I will look for them. <laughs> so that left me feeling incredibly sorrowful and it had so many different emotions inside me. Beginning with why the hell am I here with her? Why did I come to a bookstore? Where did, you know, what happened? I am never going to uh, show her a book anymore, even if she were to ask me, and so on and so on. So I wanted to know in that moment, was it a pinch or was it something else?